when we had last left Magdalene. She continued interviewing and speaking with people around town, leading to conversations about her own future prospects and who she would perhaps marry or maybe even join the convent or even leave Tassing entirely. But that was all beside the point, because indeed she found a very peculiar book, none other than Historia Tasse, Historia Tasse, Historia Tasse, from years and years ago. It was finally uncovered, held by Brigida, no less, all this time, since uh, the theft perpetrated by Martin Bauer, the original Martin Bauer. <laughs> but also she went to go and chat with ill peter who was still alive and he had a whole bunch of shit to say about the time even before the romans lived in tassing now it was time to continue her interviews and exploration of tassing's past this is pentiment welcome back let's do exactly that town commons here we come there we are. Oh, yeah, we have definitely not gone to the... Okay, yeah, we, we still have a lot of talking to do. All right. Matilda, Loslav. God bless you, Magdalene. Hello. Matilda, hello, Wojslav. How are you two? Very well. The Lord has blessed us more than we deserve. And how are you, Magdalene? I was worried with you keeping the house and the workshop all on your own. Let me bring by some soup for you and your father. You're very kind, Matilda. Thank you. Dad would love that. I've hardly had a moment to cook a hot meal. I wouldn't want to impose. Dad would love that. I've hardly had a moment to cook a hot meal. Between your father, the shop, and the mural, I'm surprised you're not dead on your feet. He's very lucky to have such a devoted daughter. And before you worry about imposing, you're not. Taking care of our neighbors is how Tilda and I serve Tassing. Our vocation may have changed, but our gratitude to God and the town has not. You've always been so dedicated to the town. It's hard to imagine you two ever lived in the Abbey. Let's say that. Ha! <laughs> Sometimes those days feel like another lifetime. A harder time to be sure. Life feels pretty hard now. I thought the Abbey was better off than the town in those years. Were the Benedictines anything like the poor Clares? I thought the Abbey was better off than the town in those years. So we were told, but in private, I believe Father Gerno struggled to provide for a scriptorium and a double monastery. Didn't help that guy was skimming off the top. However, seeing both the town and Kearsaw struggling was only a part of what made that time hard. I wonder whatever happened to Gerno. We don't know, do we? Maybe he just died. A nun's life can be, chal can be a challenging one. But I've ne I never had to deal with the difficulties you do now, Magdalene. What about your old life was difficult for you? Ellipses. I struggled with my vows, my discipline. I couldn't live as my sisters did. I broke my vows, as did Wojslav. You fell in love. <laughs> we did. Well... I seduced her. You certainly did not. Are you telling young Magda here that you seduced me then? Wojslav, please. <laughs> <laughs> so you left the Abbey. Though no one learned of what we did, the matter ate at my heart. That's true, because he did um, remember even all the way in Act 1. He is the one, right, that showed up in the dead of night, and I thought it was maybe potentially suspicious. But in reality, well, and maybe it was still suspicious, right? But the truth of it was that he did care for her. It wasn't just him trying to cover anything up for the sheer fact of him being, like, the perpetrator or whatever. But he cared for her. Though no one learned of what we did, the matter ate at my heart. 
That and being falsely accused of murdering the old Baron terrified you, and rightly so. We all must account for our sins, Magdalen. I was afraid I would account for mine sooner than I had thought. Those were the hardest years of my life. I repented and prayed to God to absolve me. But the Lord always provides, even in the darkest days. The Abbey's destruction gave us a second chance. I can't imagine the townsfolk were too happy to let you stay. It must be strange to leave that life after so long. It must have been incredibly difficult. It must be strange to leave that life after so long. Ha! Well, I will admit it's been strange not being able to enter the convent. I miss the sisters terribly some days, but truthfully, it's been a relief not to be constrained by my vows. Ellipses. The Lord forgives more readily than man, Magdalene. Never think that you must remain in a place that causes you to sin, even if others think it godly. I'm glad you two are finally able to live life together. You both deserve it. I never realized you two went through so much together. Let's say that. The revolt covered up many sins, yes, including many of our own. Only by the grace of God are we in this life together. May it be, may it be many more years before we part. God willing. Anyway, Magdalene, I'll send that soup over to you shortly. Thank you, Matilda. God bless you both. God bless you both. God bless you, Magda. God bless. Wow. Look at them. Shit. Okay. Matilda and Wojslav, huh? I wonder if um, if we had played our cards differently in the time of Andreas, if maybe that's something we could have uncovered as it was going down. Or maybe that was never available to Andreas. Andreas? Hello, Magdalene. How's close? Rizzi and I are very worried. Alive. And that's what matters. Not well, Andres. Not well. May God look after you both. We've had enough tragedy in this town. Has Gertrude been by to see him? I trust her over that doctor. That doctor. He's not reliable. I've noticed. He's the most bitter man I've ever met. He's all Dad and I have. I don't know what to do, Andres. Hmm. He's all Dad and I have. I don't know what to do, Andres. Oh, Magdalene, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't gossip. <laughs> sorry, his, vo his voice is changing a lot here. I'm trying to remember how, he how I had him sound. If there's anything Rezzy and I can do for you, let us know. I will. Thank you for your kindness, Andres. It's nothing. I owe your father more than I can say. Take care, Magdalene. Can we talk to Rezzy? Hey, we can. I wonder if she's from that city that he went to that one time. Hello, Mistress Druckerin. How's Klaus? Andris and I have been terribly worried. Dad's spirits are high, but he still gets headaches and spells of dizziness. He's been better. He'll pull, th he'll pull through. I have faith. If there's anything we can help you with, let us know. Andris is always ready to provide. He and Klaus have been friends for a long time. My thanks to you both. We're certainly grateful. If you don't mind, you weren't born in Tassing, am I right? Let's delve, why not? No, I'm originally from Innsbruck. How did you arrive here? The twists of Providence are sudden and unpredictable. I was but a young girl, selling all manner of wares on the market, pots and the like. One day this man appears to the stall, all jitters and nerves, stammering over his words, but charming in a way. We spoke at length. I was intrigued and soon enamored, as if a candle had been lit. Endris is a man of talent and means, after all, blessed with a kind soul. 
How did it feel to leave home for someone somewhere far away? Uprooting yourself from the life you had? Do you have any regrets coming here? How did it feel to leave home for someone somewhere far away? Frightening, to be sure. Leaving Innsbruck, my friends and family behind. But it was exciting as well. Going off to find new opportunities and build a new life. There wasn't much I had to look forward to in Innsbruck. Few prospects for a poor girl. I couldn't see myself sitting at the market continuing to sell odds and ends. Sometimes there are risks we just have to take. It's very inspiring, Resi. I'm glad you found happiness here. I'm still unsure. You can't actually know how life would have turned out had you stayed in Innsbruck. It's very inspiring, Resi. I'm glad you found happiness here. We all struggle in this world, but the moments of joy outweigh the bad. It's how God has set the world. Benevolence guiding has got how God has set his world, his, the world, his benevolence guiding us through it all. I feel I've been blessed, and it's not been all bad for Endris either. <laughs> I assist him with the bookkeeping side of the smithy and other things. Thank you for telling me about your past. I hope I've also made the right choices so far. Thank you for telling me about your past. It's nothing, Magdalene. I hope it has provided you with some encouragement. Don't forget, you are important as well, and deserve to live your life. All right, I have to assist Endris with a few things. Be well, Magdalene. Until later, Therese. Okay, how about over here? Else, Anna, Andreas? <laughs> how should we have her sound? <laughs> she never really had that much of a distinct voice uh, way back when. Magdalene, dear. Good day, Magdalene. Hi. <laughs> how is your father? He's doing better, I think. You have my prayers. You'll need them with Werner on the case. Anna, do not speak ill of the good doctor. He's doing his best. He's a bitter, washed-up drunkard. Everyone knows that we all have eyes. Yet we ought to trust and believe in him. It may inspire him to be... better. Everyone needs the support of their community, Werner included. Hasn't he had enough time to become better? Let's say that. Has he, he had enough time? We're all always growing and becoming more as people, Magdalene. Tell that to whoever gets killed with his incompetence. Jeez. <laughs> ah, uh, no matter. I'm just glad to be sitting down for a moment. I'm so tired. Andreas and Ulrich can wear down even the most vigorous person. Not even young oats could keep up with these two. The blessing and curse of small children. <laughs> Mom! Ulrich? Is she all right? Oh, yes. She wanted to run out and hide so I could find her. After I have caught my breath for a moment. <laughs> I don't think she'll appre she appreciates me taking this long. You're not playing along, Andreas? Hiding like your sister? No. This young man won't lose sight of his mom. Say, Magdalene, could you perhaps go find Ulrich in my stead? Uh, we've already found her. Oh, of course. I'd be delighted. Wonderful. She's somewhere in town. Although I'm not sure where by now. She ran up the street, toward the bakery. I imagine you can find her by the giggling. <laughs> I'll be off then. Okay. Can we talk to Andreas separately? Mag Glenn. <laughs> Okay, I guess we better find the kid first, before we talk to Fabian and Ursula. There we are. I remember her hiding back, yeah, by the pot. Aha, there you are. 
<laughs> you found me. Bet you can't find me again, Mag. Oh, God. I bet I can't, so so don't do it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. We should have done this first. <laughs> okay. Fucking A. Let's talk to the other people real quick. Because what if uh, this hide-and-seek game leads us to something, you know? What if we stumble into something very peculiar? Let's see. Fabian and Ursula? Good morning, Magdalene. Ursula? Hello, Magdalene. Nothing? Oats? Hey, Mags. Got your, wa got your way with the mural, huh? I didn't expect you to convince the council like that. I can be pretty stubborn when I want to, Oats. You think that little of me? I can be pretty stubborn when I want to, Oats. Clearly, I'm impressed. The rest of the council has been arguing over the matter for so long, even I couldn't get a word in. Then you come in and shut them up in a few minutes. We could use more women like you in the town. I guess we do have a commonality as well, in that Magdalene didn't really know her mother, and Oates didn't really get to know his father, right? What do you mean by that, Oates? There are plenty of opinionated women in town. Want to let us join the council? <laughs> Let's say it. <laughs> well, uh, you'd have to take that up with the Lord. Besides, I don't think any of them are as hard-headed as you. You're the exception, Magdalene. You always are. You really think so? Clearly you've forgotten about Agnes. She doesn't suffer fools gladly. Hmm. He's definitely trying to hit on us. Should we try and hear him out a bit? Let's try and hear him out. You really think so? Well, yeah. I wouldn't tell you that otherwise. You're, uh, an admirable woman. Anyway, standing up to the council like that was great. I know I'm on the council, but sometimes it doesn't seem like I have any influence. You do, though. You vouched for me to do the mural in the first place. Well, you are the youngest member of the council. The others have much more life experience. Maybe that's a good thing. You waste all of your time with Croft and Apollo anyway. Let's check this. Oates actually seems insecure about his place on the council. He may be an ass sometimes, but I don't like to see him so upset. He's always poking fun at me too. Maybe I should remind him he's not that important after all. Maybe we do kind of like him. I guess I guess it is uh, maybe the whole Oats situation is left kind of vague, and the it's it is meant for the player to read the situation and kind of decide, right? You actually have agency here as a player. Hmm. He may be an ass sometimes, but I don't like to see him so upset. Maybe I should reassure him. Huh. Let's reassure. You do, though. You vouched for me to do the mural in the first place. Only after your dad did. I still feel bad about that. I should have stuck up for you. Being the youngest one on the council has been harder than I thought. I know Baltus and Werner don't think I'm capable. Even Paul has warned me about being too rash. My dad died trying to make a difference in this town. All I'm trying to do is carry on his legacy. But it seems like the others won't make room for any change. Keep pushing, Oates. They're stuck in the past, but we're looking toward the future of Tassing. You sound like my dad. He always said the council was scared of doing anything important. I don't think anything is going to change for the better in this town. It's stuck in its ways. Hmm. Keep pushing, Oates. They're stuck in the past, but we're looking toward the future of Tassing. Thanks, Mags. Uh, Magdalene. It'll take time, but maybe they'll listen to me eventually. Ellipses. Ah, well. Better get back to it. See you later, Mags. Yeah, I don't know. He doesn't seem too bad. Hmm. Right? 
I'm not sure. I think maybe we'll we have more input than I first was led to believe. Black Till. <laughs> For simplicity's sake, he sounds just like Till. <laughs> God bless you, Magdalene. God bless you, Till. Do you have a moment? Of course. What do you need? Walt says you've been obsessed with your painting. I'm looking into the early history of Tassing for the first part of the mural. Hey, I have other interests too. Oates is just jealous I spend more time with the mural than I do with him. I'm looking into the early history of Tassing for the first part of the mural. Mother Illuminata said your grandfather read about the history of the town? Ah, fertile fields, that is. Seemed like old pot shards and Latin trivia were all he ever talked about. All of Granddad's reading came from the Abbey's library, though. And you know what happened there? Poof! Up in smoke. So you don't have any of his old books? I remember. I was there. So you don't have any of his old books? Only a few. Granddad tried to buy some when the Abbey fell on hard times, but they were too expensive. But I can show you something better than books. Anything would help. Don't keep me in suspense. Didn't your dad ever teach you patience? I'm trying to build up some anticipation here. Oh, it's just a figure of speech. I didn't realize you would remember it. <laughs> right. So, we don't have any books on the old pagans, but we do have their stuff. Shards of ceramic pots and animals, bricks from what looks to be an old forge, mountains of salt. Even found a little bear carved from amber. Where'd you find all this stuff? Where are you keeping these things? Where did you find it? It's not just me. Carl finds things. Fabian too. Any farmer would tell you the same. It's all out there. In the fields. Under the dirt. Can't go one season without turning up something. Where are you keeping these things? Nowhere. We just toss them into piles with the rest of the rocks and root clumps. Sure, it's interesting, but we can't do much of anything with the stuff except look at it. What do you think it all means? I don't follow. How do you think these people lived? What do you think they were like? Where do you think they all went? What do you think they were like? Huh. I guess I never really thought about it. They seem like regular people. Their, uh, remains all look like ours. Tools and weapons are rougher and not badly made. But not badly made. The little carvings and ceramic critters aren't so different from the things Ava made for oats. Huh. I suppose I expected them to be more strange. Because they weren't Christians? No doubt they were coarse. But they don't seem especially violent. Not like the church says. Not so different from today, really. Earlier you mentioned something about salt. Did the pagans start the salt mine? This has been a big help. This pagan history wasn't really what I expected. I feel like this conversation here also mirrors... Um... I feel like a lot of the conversation that they are trying to get... Or a lot of the meaning that the game is trying to convey to the player. Right? Like, it mirrors not just the people of Tassing in the 1500s looking back when Romans were in the area, right? But also it works doubly for the people of today playing this game, having a glimpse at the lives of people in the 1500s. Anyway. Earlier you mentioned something about salt. Did the pagans start the mine? Had to have, I'd say. Most people think it was a Roman project, but I think the Romans just dug out what was already there. That's why Tassing was so important to the Romans in the first place. Salt. I'd always wondered why they'd settled in such a small alpine town. Do you think there's anything left of the pagans down there? I don't know, but anything they left would have to be better preserved than what we dig up out of the fields. Ellipses. Magdalene, tell me you aren't thinking of going down there. What if there's stuff that could help me with the mural? 
lie. I'm definitely not thinking of going down there. What if there's stuff that could help me with the mural? Magdalene. That mine is hundreds of years old. You could break your neck just getting in there. Orpheus made it back from the underworld, didn't he? I'll be fine. It's worth it for the mural. Let's go with reactivity. I'll be fine. Maybe so, but he mocked the gods and failed in his quest, Magdalene. Don't take him as an example. Imagine how your dad would feel if you got hurt. Oh. Then help me get down safely, and he won't have to. Persuade Black Till to help you with the mine. Haggle background, holy shit. Impatient with Black Till. Was curious about the daily lives of the pagans. Wow, maybe we just barely lucked out here. Success. You're bullheaded, just like your mother. And your father. Probably couldn't keep you out of there if I tried. Ellipses. Please, Till. All right, all right. Don't know how to get down there myself, but I know those twins have gotten in a time or two. No doubt they have a trick. And Baltus might not be the most reliable man, but I don't doubt he could rig something up for you too. Thank you, Till. Don't mention it. I'm serious. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a big help. This has been a big help. Glad to spread some knowledge around. Important for folks to know their past. You think all this pagan stuff will make it in the mural? I can bring some of the things the boys and I found over to the Wrath House tomorrow, if that help at all. That'd be great. I'm glad you're taking an interest, Magdalene. I thought no one cared about the pagans but me and Grandad. Ellipses. I should warn you, though. I should warn you. If you do head into the forest, keep an eye out for the Lord's men. They're strict. Worse now than they used to be. I'll be careful. Until tomorrow. Until then. Hmm. Okay. Ava? Hello, Ava. Mag Magda, darling. Oats isn't here, I'm afraid. Oh, that's all right. I can find him later if I need to. Oh, uh, all right. I wasn't looking for him. No, are you sure? I think he wandered off toward the Wrath House. Something about the council. But if you ask me, I think he's looking for you. That's sweet of him. He has been dropping by the Wrath House more often as of late. I'm sorry to disappoint him. Does he do any real work? I'm sorry to disappoint him. <laughs> He'll recover once he learns you've dropped by. He's always working on the town council business these days, and he's still working at mastering carpentry too. I suggested a few years ago that he take up an apprenticeship, but he was determined to remain in Tassing. I think he's more comfortable here. Even if it means he'll never be the craftsman Otto was. I help him how I can, but there's only so much I know how to do. Besides, I think he feels like he's taking care of me instead of the other way around. Funny how time does that. It's good of him to stay. I wouldn't worry that you'd be lonely otherwise. Or I would worry. I think Dad misses Mom, even after all these years. Do you ever miss Otto? I would jump at the chance to leave Tassing if it didn't mean Dad would be left alone. I imagine Oates felt the same. I think Dad misses Mom, even after all these years. Do you ever miss Otto? Every day. I see him in the little things Oates does. The way he smiles and how he laughs. I miss my husband, but I'm proud of Oates. He's growing into a capable young man. I'm excited to see him grow into a husband and father. He'll make a wonderful partner. Whoever he marries will be a lucky woman. If he ever grows up, that is. He still acts like a boy half the time. Hmm. He still acts like a boy half the time. Oh, that's the way of men. 
The Lord gave them lofty spirits that need to exert themselves. Give it time, Magdalene, you'll see. All men are tempered by marriage. If you say so. Anyway, I'm sure you have things to do. I'll let you get back to them. Always good to see you, Magda. You too, Ava. I don't know. I felt like I should have, like, <laughs> in in trying to redo her voice for being older now, I felt like I, I intentionally kind of, like, made her sound older than she even looks because all of the shit that she's been through probably, like, aged her, <laughs> you know? Hey, Christina. Oh, we can actually talk to the child. Okay. Magda! Hello, Christina. Did you see the froggies on Sunday? I did. They were everywhere, weren't they? I think everyone saw the frogs, Christina. They were all over the church. <laughs> we're so mean to this kid! <laughs> you can be so mean! Just like, yeah, Christina, I think everyone saw the frogs. They were all over the church. I did. They were everywhere, weren't they? I never seen so many together before. Father Thomas was so angry, but I think it's funny. Mommy says the twins did it, and they're an example of children who don't follow the Ten Commandments. Your mom is right. Artemis and Apollo are always getting in trouble. They don't honor their parents. Well, everyone makes mistakes. That's why we confess our sins and do penance. The Ten Commandments don't say anything about frogs, though, do they? Hmm. I mean, I am kind of annoyed by them, right? And I do feel like it fits Magdalene as well. That Artemis and Apollo, although they're only probably a, like roughly the same age, maybe a little younger or even older than Magdalene, right? Like Magdalene seems so much more mature than them. And that's probably because Magdalene has had to be, you know, because they've kind of like had a hard time of, of shit, even though, um, you know, because Klaus was like, being a solo father and also grieving like the loss of um, her brother and his wife and also Andreas his friend you know I don't know that's kind of this, the way that I read the situation in her character so maybe she kind of turns her no well not turns her nose up but kind of um I guess you could read it as either resenting Artemis and Apollo for their kind of, like, carefree lifestyle. And how, like, they didn't have to grow up as fast as she did, you know? Yeah. Okay, I, I kind of like that characterization. Yeah, alright. My Magdalene, I don't think, will really cares for Artemis or Apollo. Artemis and Apollo are always getting in trouble. They don't honor their parents. Father Thomas yelled at them. Mistress Gerderin did, too. Are they going to get in trouble with God? If they confess, then no. God will forgive them, and they won't be in trouble. The only ones they'll get in trouble with is their parents and Father Thomas. I don't think God cares about sneaking frogs into church. The only ones they'll get in trouble with is their parents and Father Thomas. I don't think God cares about sneaking frogs into church. Oh, good. I like them even if the adults have to scold them. Mom scolds me sometimes, too, when I do something bad. Yeah, okay, see, this is also kind of what's conveying here, right? It's kind of the the way that, that the writing is, it's kind of like painting them to be like, yeah, they, they, are, they are older, but they're, they definitely are very immature relative to Magdalene, especially. That's why I try to listen to her and behave and say my prayers. You're a smart girl, Christina. Thanks, Magda. Mommy says so, too. Okay. Let's head on out and over here. There we are. Good. Okay, we checked in with Oates. Did we check in with Fabian and Ursula? I think we did, didn't we? Yeah, they didn't have anything to say. Yeah. Okay, well, let's head on up and over to Stoltz and Werner. Oh, fuck, the kid! Right, 
yeah, holy shit, I need to look for the fucking kid. Well, maybe she's at the north town. Right? <laughs> I almost forgot! <laughs> okay, did we talk to Gret since the attack? Huh, nothing new. Okay, how about over here? Let's check out this area. Did we talk to Craft? I think we did, right? Yeah. I guess it's still worth it to go inside of these buildings just to see if the child is, like, hiding in here. I feel like the kid will be hiding in the outdoors, though. Okay, let's check North Town. I am actually going to put off talking to, um... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I just drank some water. Oh, look! There's the kid! But yeah, I'm, I think I'll put off talking to Baltus in case that, like, advances something, you know? Though I'm not sure if it will, because I feel like we'll have to get the rope or whatever we get and then go over to the mine, you know? But just in case. Hey, kid. Got you. Oh, you found me again. Mm, wait here. I'll find a better spot. This is going to be bad, right? This is this this can only be bad. <laughs> okay, let's check the Stoltz house. There we are. Good. Check up this way. Anything? No. All right. Should we chat with Carl? I don't really know Carl. Good day, Mistress Druckerin. Check the Wrath House. Anything new here? Still just all of our stuff. Yeah. Okay. Let's head down. There we are. Central Town. And then... Huh. I guess we'll just go around trying to look for the kid, right? Yeah, why not? There you are. Hey, rule of threes, I got you. You can't hide from me, little bean. You're too good, Mag. I will go find Mom now. Oh, thank God. <laughs> All right. Let's go on over this way. Let's go meet up as well. Maybe we'll have a, another conversation. Head on over back to the commons up here. Oh. What? Hey. Oh, there we go. Okay. Great. Else. Ah, there you are. Had enough of hiding, Ulrich? Yes. Magda found me so quick. She's a good finder. No one can escape me, little one. You weren't really hiding that well anyway. <laughs> I like that we can be so fucking harsh to these children. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Magdalene just has the option of just like fucking hating kids. <laughs> no one can escape me. Hmm. I'll hide better next time. Uh-oh. I'm hungry now. We'll have to get you something to eat then, little dove. Pretzel? Oh, is that what a proper child eats? Hmm. Thank you for your time, Magdalene. Always glad to play with the children, but I really have to go now. I can't wait to see what you'll end up painting. You will do us proud, I'm sure of that. I hope so. I hope too. Until later. Okay. Now let's go over and chat with Baltus. There we are. Man, I wonder what would happen, though. Right? Like, here's the thing. The game is clearly making it sound like, okay, it's going to be quite the task and danger to go into the mine. Right? And it's pointing out two options that we have. We either get, like, mechanical help from Baltus, or we get, I don't know, 
aid of presence or like, I don't know, however, however the twins would help, right? We have those two routes. But do we not have the third route of just going in solo without any of that? How would that work? Like, obviously, the game wouldn't just, like, end and kill you, right? It definitely does not seem like that kind of a game. But I'm curious, like, how bad things could get, you know? Hmm. Okay. Let's head over here. Anything else going on? No. Who is this French dude? Ciao, Magdalene. Balthazar? Magdalene, hello. I was just jotting down a few new ideas. Did you need something? Yes. If you have a moment, I need to get into the old salt mine, but I don't have a way down. Can you help me? Hmm. To get into the old salt mine, yes? You must be on quite the adventure. Ideally, we could rig up a double pulley system to lower and raise yourself into the shaft. But that might take a while. Well, I would like to go in today, if possible. Of course, of course. Would a good length of rope suffice? You could brace against the wall of the mine shaft. Are you strong enough to support your own weight? Against the wall? I think so. Excellent. Thank you, Baltus. Of course, of course. Here you go. Do be careful, though. Make sure the ropes are secure. I will. Until later. Good luck, Magdalene. Huh. Easy enough. Okay. You have anything different to say, Baltus? Nope. Okay. Let's head on out, then. Fuck it. Let's go right for the mines, I think. I think we also had the option to write. But I'm too enthused by the mines. We can write later. Okay. Over here. Good. Church and Druckers. And into the forest. Er, not, not yet. My bad. And into the forest. There we are. Should we check in with, like, Old Smokey? Maybe? Hey, you two. Vokslav? Oh, we can talk. Man, I don't even remember what kind of voice I gave you. You're kind of aged, though. This is the, the even harder part of trying to voice these characters. It's like also taking into account them aging, you know? Which I feel like I'm not doing a great job. The way that you would do it, ideally, is you map it all out ahead of time. You know, just like, like a proper voicing director would do, right? You map all of this out ahead of time. Okay. Hello. Is there something I could do for you? Knives need sharpening. I'm Magdalene Druckerin. Are you a friend of Smokey's? I'm not sure. Is there? I'm Magdalene Druckerin. I live in town. Is there? I'm Vokslav. Smokey lets me share this space with him sometimes. I'm a tinker. Travel around and help people out with sharpening knives. Little things like that. Druckerin. Are you a printer's daughter? I am. My father is a printer. I'm the printer. My father and I are both printers. We're both. Do you sample the wares much? Yes, I read books. As often as I can. Not as much as you might think. As often as I can. Vokslav, don't. Oh, no, wait, yeah, I forgot. I gave him, like, a country accent. You're gonna get in trouble again. Trouble? From me? What's he talking about? Trouble? From me? Nah, not you, Mistress Druckerin. This one can't help but talk to people about all the strange things he believes. He reads all sorts of books, talks to odd folks, gets ideas brewing in his head. Now, that doesn't bother old Smokey none. Bothers some other people who a whole lot. Who? It doesn't bother me any. Sounds like their problem, not his. Who? Priests. Some people with limited imagination. Inquisitors. Two Inquisitors. No need to overstate the danger. Do I want to know what happened? So, books? Strange ideas? Let's do that. Yes, the host, the Eucharist, the bread and wine, 
body and blood of Christ. Holy Communion, what's it about? More and more people are writing about rejecting transubstantiation. The idea that the bread and wine of the Eucharist literally becoming becomes the body and blood of Christ. Here we go. Yes? Martin Luther has written about it. I know that. I know that. Erasmus disagreed. Let's say that. Well, yes. Luther and Erasmus aside, people have been thinking about this for a while. Both Wycliffe and Hus rejected transubstantiation for sound and logical reasons. Using our eyes, our senses, there's nothing perceptible that changes in the character of the bread and the wine. That doesn't mean it hasn't actually changed, though. Must our senses necessarily encompass all of God's miracles for them to be real? I suppose that's true. Hmm. This feels more in character. Must our senses necessarily encompass all of God's miracles for them to be real? No, not at all. But for what reason would God, would he place them outside of the compass of our understanding? As an act of faith. Blessed are those who believe but have not seen. That's a fair point. Yeah, it's all, it all, that's what it all comes down to at the end of the day. It's, an, it's as an act of faith. You have to believe. But if that is the case, of what importance is the matter, is the material composition of the host? Even if the bread and wine turn to Christ's body and blood, why is that necessary for spiritual communion? We are bound by flesh, attempting to reunite with the light of God through the Eucharist. The act, the observance, unites our will with that of Christ. He is present through a, in us through the remembrance, not the physical act. Are you following this, Smokey? Isn't that heresy? So what does that matter? Are you saying we shouldn't take communion? Even Martin Luther said the presence of Christ's physical body and blood was necessary to communion. Huh. Let's go with reactivity. Yes, but the others at Nur at Marburg Kolo Kologai disagreed. Zwingli, Millicanthan, Busser, all men far wiser and more educated on these matters than us. And if you consider that these men have rejected such thinking, then there are greater implications. Are you ready to hear why it's important to disbelieve in trans transubstantiation? Sure, why not? Yes, I'm certain this is leading somewhere good. No, I'm sorry, but I think I've heard enough. Sure, why not? I'll admit, I hope for some more enthusiasm regarding the fate of our souls, but all right. This all starts with Lucifer creating the world. Excuse me? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Say nothing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We'll get to him. <laughs> God was the word, and the word was truth, and truth is light. The light is God's will. God's light contained aspects, what we consider angels, facets of his infinite intellect. One of these aspects separated itself from his intellect and manifested in the darkness as the corrupt will, Lucifer. The darkness? Say nothing. The darkness? To exist outside of the boundaries of God's infinite light, the corrupt will bring the corrupt will brought into being an equally infinite darkness. Within that darkness, Lucifer cast his false light, a corrupted imitation of the divine intellect, to create the world. All material in our world is inherently a corrupted manifestation that of that false light. We still have a connection to God through our intellect, but it is flawed by existing in our physical bodies. So Genesis is wrong? 
was Jesus flawed by being a man, even though he was born of a virgin? But you still believe we can be redeemed through Christ, right? All right. Now I've definitely heard enough. But you still believe we can be redeemed through Christ, right? Well, of course. Finally, some sense. But not in the way that you think. Uh, of course not. <laughs> the way to be redeemed is to reunite our will with, the, with God's. How do we do that? Regular prayer, abstention from material desires, sublimation and elimination of want. That just sounds like being a monk. No, no, priests and monks both are corrupt agents of the business of the church. They have taken the simplicity of holy devotion and profaned it with pageantry. The saints, too. All this talk of morts and satia and miracles are just stories. The church has led people astray, put the hope of people in meaningless rituals, faith in relics. I don't think so. I believe what Father Thomas teaches is the gospel. I can see why you don't go into town much. You have some interesting ideas, Vakslav. You have some interesting ideas, Vakslav. I'm glad you think so. I've spent a lifetime thinking about them. Anyway, thank you for indulging me, Magdalene. It was illuminating. Of course, I was just being polite. It was illuminating. Until later. Until then. Huh. I wonder if that'll come up again. Yeah, it definitely seems like he's thought a lot more about shit since we met him as Andreas, right? Smokey? Good day, Mr. Struckerin. I've told you, Smokey. Call me Magdalene. Huh. Old habits, I suppose. What brings you to my corner of the woods? More gossip? Yes, actually, but first I wanted to ask you about the old salt mines. Only ancient gossip. I was wondering if you knew anything about the old pagan and Roman mines. As much as I'm curious, no, I'm looking for a way to get into the old salt mines. Yes, actually, but first I wanted to ask you about the salt mines. Our mines? Is this a new interest of yours, Magdalene? I don't see the townsfolk trek out there as much anymore. Last I saw were those two twins making trouble. They know a way in, but I'll be damned if I ever set foot close to that place. What are you so interested in over there? The mural in the Wrath House needs a section about the earliest days of Tassing. The mines are the oldest part of Tassing, and you keep a keen ear. I thought you might have heard something. I don't know about getting down into the mines, but I do know a fair few stories about them and the other Roman ruins around here. The old stories. My father used to tell me when he was a burner of Tassin. The one about Mars and Tassia, the nymph, was always my favorite. Though, I blame that on my youth. Tassia? The Roman nymph Tassin? The Roman nymph Tassin was named after. Her spring was the foundation of the town. Oh, right. Tassia? Like Tassin? Mm-hmm. Folk named the town after a pagan god. A Roman one at that. I don't mind telling you the tale, Magdalene, but I warn you, it's a bit bawdy. Oh, count me curious. Well, I need something about the Romans to paint on the mural. Oh, uh, I don't need to hear those parts. I've heard plenty of Roman myths. I'm sure none of it will surprise me. Let's go with that reactivity. Maybe not, but I won't have your father hounding me for coarseness. Folk in this town don't like me anyhow. But I'll tell the decent bits of what I remember. All right, what's the story? What's the story? Ugh, everyone excludes me from the fun. All right, what's the story? Well, legend says that Mars was hunting in these woods and spied a fat boar for the taking. He just pulled back his spear when he heard a woman scream in terror. Of course, the creature ran off, and the god was angry at the loss of his quarry. So he tramped through the woods to see why a woman was in the forest and not in the local town. Why would a god be hunting in Tassing's forest? 
But I go, I go in the forest all the time. Why would a god be hunting in Tassing's forest? How should I know? Maybe he just wanted a brisk walk. Besides, why should anything the gods do make sense? These were the old days, when spirits and ghosts prowled. What do you mean, prowled? You're just trying to scare me. Ghosts aren't real. Humans go... Human spirits go to heaven or hell. They don't stay on Earth. What do you mean, prowled? Proud. You know, like spirits and other evil things do. I can't just say they walk through the woods like you or me. They prowled. All right, all right, keep going. So Mars found a nymph, Tessia, bathing in a spring with a fat, ugly satyr goading her from the shore. Enraged at seeing the trapped nymph, Mars transformed into a wolf and slew the satyr. And in return, well, <laughs> Tessia bathed the god. <laughs> <laughs> they bathed. Ah, I see. Ha, I get it. They bathed. Ah, I see. <laughs> I did warn you, Magdalene. When Mars left the pool, he dripped onto the ground, and it blossomed with flowers and crops. They say... That's why this valley is so fertile. Huh. Mars got around, didn't he? Was there any nymph he didn't have his way with? That might be tricky to paint on the mural. I'm not sure if the council would approve. Oh my. Did you make that up? How do I know that's a real legend? Huh. Mars got around, didn't he? Was there any nymph he didn't have his way with? <laughs> he was a god of virility, wasn't he? You can see why I like the tale in my youth. So much of what the Romans left behind was destroyed over the years. But I like that we still have these tales. You can never really destroy stories, as long as there are people to tell them. Of course, the Romans left a hell of a lot behind, too. The town is more Roman than Bavarian, really. Well, we are part of the Holy Roman Empire. Well, that we can click on this. <laughs> the largest and most powerful European state in its time, the Holy Roman Empire was made up of many peoples and suffered from much internal strife during the Reformation, despite Emperor Maximilian's firm hand over the land. Yeah, wild that that's only showing up now. Or maybe it refreshed or whatever in being, in being clickable. Because of how long it was a Roman colony? That's ridiculous. We're Bavarian, not Roman. Oh, right. The town was named after Tassia, the nymph. Well, we are a part of the Holy Roman Empire. <laughs> that we are, and not for a lack of trying. Tassin is actually much smaller now than it was in the Romans' day. At least, that's what I make of it. The ruins go deep into the forest and all the way to the old mine. Half of Tassin is built on Roman stone. Take a walk around town, and you'll start noticing things. We use their stone to build. The old temple by Satya's shrine has grown over, but the aqueduct runs for miles. Even the abbey used to be an old Roman fort. Really? Oh, shit. Huh. You can see some of the... Oh, yeah, of course, because of the, the secret passages and whatnot, yeah. Yeah, but I but we didn't know that it was a fort, right? We definitely knew that it was like built by Romans, but not that it was specifically a fort. Or maybe we did, I forgot. You can see some of the Roman paved stones under the road if you look hard. We may not be Roman, but this town is. Tassing has been building upon itself for hundreds of years. What a beautiful idea. I never realized how much we relied on the Romans for our infrastructure. Old stones aren't much of a legacy. It's all rubble now. Reused and forgotten. Tassing has been building upon itself for hundreds of years. What a beautiful idea. That's the way of things. Most people don't notice the old stones. Too busy in town to notice what's right in front of their eyes. Huh. Maybe I should go take a look at the mine. I'd get a better sense of what things were actually like. <laughs> Nothing'll stop you. I see. Well, I won't either. 
Just keep an eye out for any wolves or satyrs you might see down there, huh? I'll let you know if I see any. Thanks for your help. You're still not gonna spook me, Smokey. Let's say that. <laughs> Worth a try, though. Good luck, Magdalene. Be safe. Aw. Man, such a shame that nobody really gives a shit about old Smokey, because he's, like, cool as fuck. Let's look at this fun plant. It's nice to see some green this time of year. Whorehound is one of the few plants that grows around year-round here. Okay, we've seen that. All right, well, holy shit. I suppose when next we come back, we will head into the mine. Holy heck. And take a tour of some of the ruins. And finally, advance time as well. Or should we check in with the, um... With the siblings. Like, can we potentially get the siblings and the rope? Could we do both? Hmm. Because that would probably be the safest option. But I don't know if I... Huh. Hang on, let's refer to our journal here real quick. Tassing's early history. Oh, shit. Okay. Hmm. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't know! <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want to get them involved, though. Right? Yeah, I think we'll just go over on our own. Right? Oh, hey, I just noticed we are actually carrying the rope here. Look at this. Alright, well, next we come back, spelunking. Until next time, please, take care of each other.